Serious what are some scary, horrifying, creepy things that have happened to you, or in general, that could have a plausible explanation, but still freak you out. A few years back, I lived with my mother and German Shepherd in a two-bedroom rented town home. I got home from work one day and went about my daily routine. When it came time to eat dinner I knocked on my mom's door to come and eat. I smelled cigarette smoke and heard her grunt a response. So I went back down and ate alone. I figured I would just put a plate away for her. Fast forward to about 2am, I'm awoken by someone holding my hand and gently shaking it. I immediately shoot straight up and look around. My dog, who is overly protective and sleeps with me every single night, isn't in bed. She isn't even in the room. She most definitely was on my bed when I went to sleep. I sleep with the bedroom door shut and locked. She is scratching at my closed and locked bedroom door from the hallway. Frantic. I bolt for the door. Let her in, and she is searching the whole room. I am now yelling for my mother. No answer. I force my dog to walk down the hallway with me. I still smell cigarette smoke. I bang on my mom's door. No answer. So I just open it. She isn't even home. The bed is made, and her TV is off. My dog and I search the whole entire house. Nothing is out of place. All the doors and windows are still locked. I was freaked out to say the least. The next day I called my mom, and she told me she left early the day before to go visit my sick grandfather. When I was younger, my mom, my grandma and I liked to go to this little frau frau tea shop that was about 40 miles from our home. It was a cute little place where you could get the classic tea and sandwiches and cute little desserts and all. One time we went, all was normal, but on the way home, we received a call that my other grandma had passed away. Very sad, but as she had been battling cancer not exactly unexpected. The next time we went, a few months later, on the way home we received a call that my uncle had died suddenly of a heart attack. Creepy coincidence for sure, but we still did not think too much of it at the time. We went back a third time a few months after that, and for the third time on the way home, we received the phone call that someone had died. This time it was my grandpa's brother. We never went back to that tea shop again. Now all of these people were elderly and not exactly in the best of health, so them passing away around the same time was not exactly creepy. But the fact that three separate times that we went to this place, three people died the same day and we received the calls on the way home, makes me think something about that place was cursed. It has since closed, but I'm still nervous to even go to that area to this day. I used to have a penchant for wandering around abandoned buildings when I was in high school. One time a friend and I decided it would be a good idea to explore a farmstead that hadn't been in use for years. The whole experience was really bizarre. The farmstead was accessible by a long gravel road that brought you to a cluster of dilapidated buildings around a central barn. We parked at the end of the gravel road near the turn off to the main road, so we could walk around the property and just pull out quickly later. We went into the barn first and there were deer bones arranged in a circle around the skull and a bunch of blankets and wood stacked in a corner of the room. We thought it was really cultish and weird, no power, and started walking back to the car. Halfway down the gravel road we heard crunching, heavy footsteps and someone screeching behind us. Blood curdling screeching. We sprinted back to my car and tried to peel out of there as fast as possible, but it had snowed the night prior and my back tire was stuck in a puddle of melted snow. My friend was screaming because she was so freaked out but wouldn't turn to look at the path behind us. By the time I had gotten the car unstuck she turned around to see if there was someone following us and there was no one there. I could have been a bird or something, but we both swear up and down to this day that someone was following us. I actually thought I was going to die that day. You ever used one of those sleep apps that records noise while you're sleeping? It's supposed to be so you can hear if you're snoring or talking or whatever. I'm having a hard time sleeping right now, so I turned it on. 3am, there's a load of footsteps sounds and sounds like doors and drawers opening and closing. I can hear myself moan close to the phone from time to time, like I'm dreaming, but there's not any noise of rustling bedsheets to explain sleepwalking or anything. I have a large velvety rug in my bedroom, so there shouldn't be footsteps. 
Realistically, I have a metal bed frame so the clicking and knocking sounds are probably the bed frame shifting when I move, but it sounds really like other things. I'm not recording at night anymore. Context, my grandfather was a truck driver and taught me everything I know about driving, especially in snow. I used to work at a drugstore and one night, I was closing another store in our chain, and we had a snow squall that unexpectedly dropped a few inches of snow in our area. I wasn't very familiar with the area, and I had my mum's car, so I wasn't used to the car either. The snow was still coming down, and I couldn't see, so I was creeping home, and panicking as I saw cars spinning out all around me. All of a sudden, I saw a light in my passenger side view mirror, and I turned my head, and sitting in the passenger seat, plain as day, I saw my dead grandfather. I heard him say he knew that I wasn't freaked out by a little snow, and then I heard his voice rattling off all the things he taught me about driving in the snow. I looked back towards the road, and then he was gone. It was a calming experience, when I saw him, it was more okay, pops here, I'm okay, instead of omg you're supposed to be dead wtf, and I stopped panicking, and got home without a problem. It was most likely just my brain slash eyes slash whatever playing tricks on me to get me to stop panicking, but to this day it still freaks me out. Mine's even weirder. When I was younger, my mom came from her ancestral home taking home some trinkets and two paintings of two people apparently from our family. Anyway, after that, every night at around 11pm I would hear people talking outside my room. I just dismissed it as someone watching TV or something. But one night my parents left, and I had to babysit my C's. We were chilling in my room, when I heard the talking again. Then my sister goes, can you check if the TV is on? We are the only ones here, now I dk what to think. Apparently, she started assuming the same thing as I did, and have been experiencing the same thing, since the paintings came. Told my mom afterwards, and she brought them back to their ancestral house. My sister and I cold just suffered joint hallucinations but still. So as a youngster me and my brother were staying up late playing video games, since we didn't have school the next morning. It was maybe 3am when we decided to shut it down and get in bed. My room is at the end of the hall while my brother's was right next to mine. After we shut it off and put the controllers away we both hear these heavy slow footsteps coming from the kitchen. The kitchen was the only room without carpet, so they sounded pretty ominous. We gave each other a look and I called out down the hall dad. Well then the footstep sounds trailed back towards the laundry room and stopped. That's also where our basement door is. Well we knew something wasn't right so we both start yelling for our mom and dad, and they come rushing to us all sleepy and confused. And we frantically explain what we heard. My dad goes and checks it out and tells us that all the doors are still locked and closed and there wasn't anything showing anyone was in the house. Plausible explanation could be that it was just a murderer that broke in and scurried off when we called out, but I always wondered what if it was a murder ghost instead. My dad told me the story of when he was just out of college and visited friends in California. This was just prior to the Night Stalker killings in the 80s. My mom stayed home because she was not feeling well, actually was pregnant with me. My dad was sleeping on his friend's couch and heard someone walking around. He called out his friend's name, then his roommates and the walking stopped. He heard a window close after that and then nothing. It's very possible someone had climbed in the back window, was in the house, and my 6 feet 4 inches 240 pound college football player of a dad scared him off by calling out. It's kind of a family dark joke that my dad scared Richard Ramirez away, but my mom hates thinking about it because the dates and location works out that it very well could have been him in his early years trying it out before he started killing. I was reading the Ars Gosha to get inspiration for a short story I wanted to write. Shortly after I started hearing this jingle from my bedroom window in the middle of the night. There was nothing in the backyard or neighbors houses that could have caused it, not even a wind chime. Then I woke up one morning and my grandpa's painting was upside down. Several days later the knives were all the wrong way in the holder. Then the garbage can was backwards. And that kept going on and on and on. Most of it got explained. Turns out there was an archdiocese really close to our house and the bells in the tower would go off if the wind was just right. 
and my so knows I like creepy things, so he did most of the turning household items backwards, and came clean, when I started getting scared instead of just having fun with it. Only thing that has no explanation is my grandpa's painting. My reaction with the painting, is what made my so decide to run with it, but he did not turn it upside down. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell to turn on notifications, so you'll be sure to know when the next video comes out. Want to watch some more? Check out my other videos. I really do appreciate everyone who helps make these videos possible. And as always, thanks for watching.